Hello and welcome back. This time around we're working again on this uh, electric car that I made for the kids. I actually got this for free off of eBay. It was a 6 volt system with uh, one motor on one wheel. We then changed it to a 12 volt system with two motors. Then we used some um, drill powered batteries on it which were I think 18 volt. So that was a bit quicker. <clears throat> we then switched it to a 24 volt. And then finally my son was wanted to go quite a bit faster and do some drifting and we switched it to a 36 volt. Go. And since then we've been through about four of these motors. I did try different types. Some of them on eBay were advertised as 36 volts, but I don't think they were rated that because they pretty much all burnt out. So I think this one was the fastest. It was a 24 volt, uh, 40,000 RPM. This one was going pretty, pretty well until it burnt out after about maybe one hour or half an hour of playtime. So, what I'm doing now is uh, trying to put a different type of motor. So I'm gonna use this, it's from a Razor electric scooter. It's uh, not the fastest thing, it's not quite as quick as the motors that I've got on the drift carts. So these are slightly bigger motors. I don't know exactly what their output is, but let's have a quick look on this one. It does say 24 volt, 100 watts, so it's a pretty low powered motor. And I have tried it on 36 volts. I don't know how long it's gonna last on 36 volts, but it did seem to work okay. And I think for my youngest son, this should do all right, because he's not that heavy, I think right now he's about 12 kilos. So what I've done so far with whatever bits I had lying around in the garage is make this axle so this is actually the, the original axle that comes out of the car and that motor with the gearbox just slide on the end and it spins the wheel and the axle is stationary. So I just used whatever bits I had. I had these, I don't know, they came from like a, a washing machine and they were just there to keep the, uh, the drum in place during shipping so it doesn't damage the springs. And then I welded some brackets on and put the sprocket and then same on this other side to put the brake disc. And now because the wheels tend to spin on the axle, there's nothing stopping them because now the, the whole axle is going to spin with this setup. I need to make something to hold the wheels in place. So what I've got here is a nut and a piece of metal and all I'm going to do is weld these together and then put a screw through this into the wheel and then a grub screw into this bolt and that's how I'm gonna fix the wheel to the axle so I'm just gonna do a bit of welding here I'll make two of them and then I'll put them on the wheels and hopefully that does it so here's where we are right now I, I made most of this uh, off camera but uh, all I'm doing now is making sure that the wheels go on and then I can fit this which is just gonna hold the wheel to the axle and I'm just driving two screws through it and so far everything I've done was pretty much free I haven't had to buy anything as I said the car was free and uh, all of the parts I've used so far have all just been stuff that's been lying around in the garage. I was debating going to a machining shop that has a lathe and make most of these parts on a lathe. That would make it a lot better. They'd be nice and centered, especially where we've got the sprocket, uh, the disc brake and the sprocket. It would have been much better if, uh, if I made those parts on a lathe rather than just a drill and uh, a protractor, which, which is basically what I used to try and center it. But uh, the gear 
is a little bit wobbly it's not quite nicely centered but uh, the brake disc is quite nice and straight the gear wobbles around a bit they're not quite true so it kind of goes up and down a bit it's not uh nice and centered on the center point of the axis but it, it i think it will work in the end so all i need to do now spin these around so the reason i put them that way is so i can I, I can drive the screws in and now i'm gonna drive it the other way around put my grub screw in there same on this other side this actually is the right way around already and then here's my axle it's gonna go in the back of the car but i do need to cut out quite a lot of this plastic and then i need to make some kind of frame around it and screw it to the plastic bit of the car maybe even get to a point where i connect it to this front piece but this is already broken because my kids did have a bit of a bump so one of the axles for the front wheels is no longer welded in place so the wheels don't go through together now this is the point where i might ruin this whole car altogether but I don't think uh, there's anything else I can do with it because my kids want to go a bit quicker. So once I cut this off, there is no way I can reuse the old motors with the old axles. And just to make life a bit easier because I can't get the tool in there, I'm going to remove this rear bumper. So this is it, uh, I cut the middle bit out, so now the wheels sit in this place. I need to make uh, some chassis legs here, I don't know exactly if I'm going to make it wide enough so it can fit through that gap and go all the way to the front, or if I'm going to make them narrower and go over and then back down. I haven't yet decided, I think best way is to go straight over this so that I can screw this into the into the chassis leg so that way the plastic sits nicely onto the chassis and it gives it some some strength I don't expect this to be too fast but uh, I don't know if the plastic is going to be good enough so it's been a couple of minutes of welding and I've made this bit of the frame so this is roughly what it's going to be like then you're going to have the motor on this side the brake this on this side and then somehow I'm gonna uh, weld something here that it goes up and over to the front I'm running quite low on this type of square tubing which I quite like because it's easy to cut and weld together at 90 degree angles <clears throat> and it's easy to screw down onto it compared to the uh, round tube that I use there but Again, I'm just using what I have in the garage. So I'm gonna be um, saving some of these for where I need to mount things onto them and then using the round tube everywhere else. <clears throat> and uh, I don't know, I might put something in the back here, but it will limit my ability to adjust the position of the motor and the tension of the chain. But anyway, this is sort of what it's gonna end up looking like in the end. Because I don't have any jigs and fixtures, I'm struggling to make sure this is nice and square. But it shouldn't matter too much for this little car. Even if it's not quite perfectly square, it's going to be fine. And also, this is not a how-to video. It's just a <laughs> how to do with what you've got. So I don't want anyone asking questions about what you've used because I've just used what I've had lying around. Now I'm just going to mark out where I need to drill and tap the holes for mounting the axle.
The next step is figuring out how to mount the motor because it has three holes here so I needed something to mount it to. So what I've had to do is take the old scooter that this motor came out of and cut this little bracket out so That scooter is no longer usable because I had to cut the, the frame around so I can take this bit out. So the question now is do I fit it like this with basically mount this on the chassis leg and then the chassis leg goes there straight or do I fit it this way around so the sprocket is more in the middle. I haven't yet quite figured that one out but at least I have some form of bracket where I can fit the motor onto the chassis leg and I'm gonna make some slotted holes so that then I can adjust the tension in the chain and hopefully that will do the trick. I just need a bit more of this type of bar and I'm thinking I'm thinking out loud here but I'm not quite sure yet how I'm gonna do this. Maybe just make a, a square box so this mounts and then just one bar that goes over the top. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah, he's gonna get the... He's gonna get lights on his car when we make it fast enough to keep up with us. Yeah, so then we need No problem, we'll get the lights. Huh? Don't worry, I'll find a, I'll find a way. No, it's gonna be underneath. Okay, Oscar, can, could you leave that alone so we can go in the house first? Now I've got four holes drilled and tapped. I know this is quite thin metal and so you don't have a lot of threads but again it shouldn't matter because this is not heavy duty it's gonna have to carry a kid that weighs 15 kilos max this piece of metal I've just cut out is gonna go here so I have a place where I can put two slotted holes so that I can fit the motor and then it can be adjusted to adjust the, ch the chain tension so that goes there and then it's welded together and then I have a place to mount the motor and then similarly I need to do something with the with the brake caliper on the other side but I haven't quite figured it out yet and I think I might do a trial run with just the motor before putting the brakes on. I've just beefed up the welds a little bit. It was all spot welded. I just put a bead of weld. I managed to blow through here because this is quite thin. But I will complete the weld on the other side next time around or I might reduce the uh, current. So what I want to do now is see if I can assemble this in place and make sure it all fits and then find a way to mount it uh, to the car. Now if you've been watching from the beginning you would have noticed that initially I had planned to uh, put this this way up in the car so with these pointing towards the ground when the car is the right way up and then Later on, I decided to fit it the other way, just so that the motor is protected. Um, the motor is here and it's protected a little bit by the by the chassis legs. Uh, but what by doing this, what I didn't take into consideration is that the chain might hit here, and uh, also the tensioning isn't quite right. So I'll have to see how tight this is going to be to the chain and what I need to cut off in order to make it work. But for now, I'll continue with the assembly and then we'll do a test. We'll try and do a test drive later. 
So this is where I'm at tonight. I welded those L brackets there, two more brackets here. So this is now in place. It does look a bit off. It's not quite straight, but I think that's to do with, um, with these mounting points here. I'm not gonna worry too much about it as long as it runs straight. So I'm just gonna connect the battery and see if it works. This is a bit nerve wracking because I have had issues with that controller in the past. So we've got the throttle. It does go backwards, but that's not a problem. I will put a forwards and reverse shifter on it, but if I give it full throttle, actually I'll start slow so it can go slow. And then seems to be getting a fair bit of speed and I still haven't fixed the front wheels yet but I think it sits quite nicely there's no real gap it's quite nice and low Yeah, and we need to fit brakes on it because it's a bit too fast, isn't it? Okay. No brakes yet, but I will put brakes on it. No, it didn't have to, it didn't used to have brakes. It's just the motors would slow you down, but this motor doesn't. So we'll put some brakes. Okay, go not too fast because there's no way to stop and I don't want you to hit anything. Frank. Okay, go not too fast, just a little bit faster. Okay, come here. Slow down! 